down. It was a firestorm. I know what. There was tornadoes of ash the size of charcoal from a barbecue, like being thrown by baseball players. I'm ducking behind walls. I had to kick in the door at Bubba Gump's to get out of it because I was getting pounded. And then Bubba Gump started on fire and I'm running down Front Street and the wall, there's like 80 people and the ocean was on fire. Firefighter told me because the first layer of ash causes a seal. And then the next layer of ash was all the ambers. So the tide line was on fire and I had to jump uh, through the water I, I don't know what I'm and thinking, come up I'm through the fire. And 80 people, they were on the wall. Everybody started jumping in. Coast Guard was out there grabbing people. And I was like, no, I'm good. I was born in the water. I'm a cot. And they're grabbing people and I swam. I knew my phone was only good for like 15 seconds being submerged. And then swam for like a half mile north. It was like nothing you've ever seen. This was bad that the people in their cars that were dead and from asphyxiation and the fire blew out the car and you just saw the numbers of the dead are so wrong. People. I heard a rumor that Oprah Winfrey's mansion in Hawaii went completely untouched. And you know how all these celebrities like to get their hands, get their hands in these situations to help out, you know? But this is some sick shit, guys. People are still dying. People are still dying here from this, from this event. And you're gonna capitalize off of them. Really. Oprah Winfrey CBS camera crew are refused entry to Lahaina Wildfire Shelter out of respect for survivors seeking safety. The part-time resident of Hawaii had her crew turned away Sunday despite being allowed in and captured on camera last week. The billionaire TV host and businesswoman owns roughly a thousand acres of land on Maui. The fires have left nearly a hundred people dead and hundreds without homes. This death toll is questionable. That's all I'm allowed to say about this, apparently. Oprah attempted to bring CBS crew inside the facility where survivors continue to struggle in the aftermath of the devastating fires that tore through Lahaina. Let me give you a glimpse, okay, of what some of these people saw, are enduring, went through. I don't think you get it. I don't think you get how sick this really is. They're calling it an inferno. As inferno grew, Lahaina's water system collapsed. Firefighters who rushed to contain the Maui wildfire found that hydrants were running dry, forcing crews to embark instead on a perilous rescue mission. People were watching other people and their homes and their animals and their property torch in front of their faces while they ran out of water and no one could do anything about it. Second, children were sent home where their parents were not because they were at work due to a power outage at the school. The two generations that were lost, okay, were the grandparents and the children. And you wanna stick a camera in people's face and record it so you can make a fucking documentary on it on Netflix later on? Are you serious? There are growing fears that many children are among the dead after the Maui wildfires, after they were left home alone when schools delayed opening due to power outages before the storm. They weren't warned. They were not warned by the ones that are there to protect them, like it's their jobs to do this, they didn't do that. And they not only do not apologize it and have zero remorse for not giving these people any kind of warning, they defend it. Biden goes on national television, okay? And he tells these residents that they have to go online and apply for a one-time $700 payment. I don't know if you guys know this, but the natives do, and I have videos on here. I will post them. I don't know. I've been getting slammed with violations. 
a lot of these areas only have landlines, guys. Their computers are all burnt. Their cell phones are burnt. Their libraries are burnt to the ground. But go on online and apply to see if you're eligible, at least. I mean, did you lose enough for us to help you? Yeah, anybody wants to know out there where to go if this is televised, that they can go to disasterassistance.gov. Disasterassistance.gov to learn if you're eligible for assistance. Thousands of people in Maui are without cell service as the wildfires continue to rage out of control on the island. Preventing people from calling emergency services or updating loved ones about their status. It could take days or even weeks to get the networks back up and running. Parts of Kula still do not have water, electricity, gas, or internet. Cell phone coverage is spotty. I have also seen several claims from the locals that FEMA and the Red Cross are rejecting donations from the people. Other alerting articles are residents of Maui have come forward with startling allegations claiming police on the island preventing people from evacuating when recent wildfires were raging through town. Maui residents say utility trucks blocked roads as they tried to flee. Maui police Continue. blockaded escape so routes. around back to Front Street and there were all the cars were lined up, but none of them were moving. And I walked all the way from Safeway to the chart house. Not one car had moved. And I was wondering what was stopping the traffic. Well, it was a policeman. And I got to the end and I looked up north. There were no obstructions. There was no reason to keep those cars there. Are you serious? I'm serious as a heart attack. And I, I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm a... And I said, the fire is, is right around Safeway. It's going to hit Front Street. You know, these people got to get out of here. And he said, I'm following order. No way. And I, so I just kept walking. I, well, maybe he knows something I don't, you know. So, And I keep walking down the highway. And I look behind. No cars are coming out. I walked all the way to Waikuli Beach. Still no cars coming out. And I started hearing boom, boom, boom. And then I heard people screaming and stuff. You're saying they were blockaded in by the police? At the end of Front Street? Yeah. Like where that restaurant is? Right, where the chart house where the was. chart house was i should right. say they, there was a blockade there and they could not go any right. I walked, what the I, hell i walked all the way from safeway to there not one car had moved and people walking in front of me the people in the cars are saying would you like a ride and they go oh okay and they'd get in they asked me the, no you better get out of here you know and, and uh but they just well we were told to evacuate by car I, 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 okay so i just kept walking and I got all the way to, uh, like I said. No, they're not slick. Just wait. Everybody, like, just wait until our people find out the truth. They know, they know how powerful we all are together. And if everybody knew what really happened, and if we all stood up against it, it's done. Especially as Islanders, do you know how unified we all are? We're a unit. I'm going to share the photo, but y'all... Did y'all know that they shut the water off? They shut all the water off. So some people, I've seen a video saying like, oh, this smart man used the water hose to fight off the fire from his house. Everybody tried. The water was off. Not only that, all the children were home because school was canceled that day. They were all home. And the parents weren't there to evacuate them. Y'all, please pause and read what one of my sources sent me. The locals are already traumatized with enough to deal with, but as the truth comes out, we can share it and put a stop to the evil and the narrative that they're trying to... Just wanted to come on here and say, do not believe what is being told on the news. 86 casualties is not true. The actual count is estimated somewhere between 500 and 1,000 people. People were not informed except for five minutes before they had to evacuate. And this was via a cell phone message, an emergency alert. Our town has 
evacuation sirens for tsunami installed that are working, actively working, and they were not sounded. Children home from school while their parents worked. Our Kapuna who only have access to landlines. These are the people that that they're pulling out of houses right now. That they're pulling out of rubble. Our whole town is gone. Our families are forever changed. And I go to load up with supplies to bring them into Lahaina to help out our family members that are still there. And there's tourists getting off the plane wearing puka shells. Now, all of these are articles from online. Anyone could write them. These videos are claims from the locals. Believe them if you want. I don't know. But I do have to say, if this is a way that it was truly handled, then we have a big problem. Things just keep looking worse for the Hawaiian government. They are seeming guiltier and guiltier by the hour. Remember when the emergency manager of Maui had a press conference and said that he didn't regret not sounding the siren? Because he said it would make people think there was a tsunami and make them run to higher ground? AKA towards the fires? Well, I took myself over to the Hawaiian government's website and I went over to their emergency alert system section. Let's roll this clip and let's see what the sirens are actually for as per the government. We also use sirens for hurricanes, brush fires, flooding, lava, hazmat conditions, uh, or even a terrorist event. There you have it, folks. The Hawaiian government's own website says that the sirens should be used for fires. Those sirens are supposed to be used for multiple types of disasters. I want an independent investigation now.